Okay, welcome to um, Logic Design for Wednesday, the 25th of November. Uh, last class before Thanksgiving, which is tomorrow. Happy Thanksgiving. Um, everybody be safe and uh, stay safe, be careful, uh, but enjoy your, uh, your Thanksgiving feast. Uh, if somebody uh, absolutely doesn't have any place to go and you're in San Antonio, uh, send me an email and maybe we'll work something out for you. Um, the, uh, so, um, what else? Uh, so, we're going to go over the final exam some more. I, I'll, I'll show you today kind of uh, what it's likely to look like, although I haven't actually worked it out yet, but it's, it'll probably be similar to this. There'll probably be a study guide to go with it, although I'm not entirely sure. And, I, and this time I may, may make the study guide released when you start the test instead of beforehand. So we'll see. I'm not 100% not sure how that's going to go down. Um, all right, let's quickly take a look at the syllabus. Uh, let's see, uh, syllabus is there. And then let me shrink me down a little bit here. Okay, so here we are. Um, so this is week 14. Week 15 will be next week. Uh, and tomorrow we only have uh, two classes this week. And this is today, the 25th. Uh, we've already covered SM charts, so we're, uh, but we're going to review a bunch of SM charts today. I, I want you to be very confident with SM charts. So if you're not, make sure you come on Monday to the help set, to the office hours and get some help with SM charts. Um, so uh, make sure you're doing some SM chart problems. Uh, and uh, I'm going to go over a number of SM chart problems uh, in, in today's lecture. Um, okay, and then uh, I, homework 13 is due Monday, so plan on turning that in Monday. Uh, and that is the last homework, of course. Okay, uh, so we'll get rid of this, and uh, we'll get rid of this, because you don't need to worry about DSD. And then I'm going to bring up this um, file here. Let's see, that's not it. Oh, it's uh, I think it's here. Okay, so here was here was the file, and let me put my little face back into the mix here. Yeah, we'll slide me over here. Okay, so these were the figures uh, that I used last spring, and uh, it may be similar to this, so we'll see. So I'm definitely going to have one problem where I give you a truth table. There are going to be some min terms required, and there are going to be some don't cares, and there are going to be some max terms, obviously. So here I went ahead and took the liberty of putting, well, okay, maybe I did, or maybe I did. One, zero, one, 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 uh, one, one, sorry, one, zero, one, 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 don't care, one. Yeah, one, one, don't care, one. And then one, zero, 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 uh, okay, don't care, one, right? Zero, 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 four zeros. And then finally, don't care, zero, zero, don't care. Don't care, zero, zero, don't care. Remember, you always switch the rows. You always switch these two columns. So the way the squares are numbered, and you can just look at That's zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. The squares are numbered zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, and 15 should be right there. All right, so keep that in mind. Uh, don't mess that up. It's it's easy, but if you get confused, make sure you've you've worked with these K-maps so you can read off any of the terms. All right, so uh, let's look at this K-map. Uh, so what are some questions I might ask? I might ask how many prime implicants. Um, so let me print this out, uh, and then uh, and then we'll work with it. See, hopefully that'll print real good without any problem. Yeah, okay, good. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna project this down here. Now to do that, I'm gonna open up my 
projector program. And we got that. And then I'm gonna move these out of the way. And mm -hmm. okay, and there we go. Alright. Now I do have the other one. I'll grab it while we're at. I've got several. Okay. Yeah, there are several here. Okay, that's good. Okay. Okay, now let's see if we can get this. Uh, it's not too bad. Let's just get it like this. Uh, slide this back. Yeah, and that's pretty good. And then we'll focus it. Hopefully we'll focus good. All right, that's not too bad. Um, yeah, maybe we'll cone in on it a little bit. So that's a little better. And then I'm going to go ahead and make this big. Okay, and then we'll adjust it so it's nice and... All right, so let's look at this. So I, I took the liberty of copying these over here. So let's say, so there are several questions you could be asked. Um, so so what is, the, what is the function of the truth table? It gives the desired output for each possible combination of input vectors. So when A is, say, 1, and B is, say, 0, and C is 1 and D is 1, then it, it's supposed to output a 0 for F, and so forth. Every one of these rows, there's 16 possible combinations because there's four variables, and we always have two to the end. Uh, and, and we've defined what we want for every one except for, uh, for, for 6, for C, and for F, we haven't defined. We, we say those combinations will never occur, so we don't really care what, what, what the output is because you'll never see it because it's never going to happen. And since it's never going to happen, we, uh, we, we can choose it to be whatever would be helpful. Now, if you look at this map, it's pretty obvious to me what would be helpful. Now, now uh, th this can be tricky, but as you look at it, one of the things you can see is this X is obviously going to be chosen as a 1. And we'll, we'll, we'll loop this column here, and we'll loop this group of 4 here. But what you might do that would be potentially wrong is you might you might want to uh, well I don't have my uh, red pen I did something with it I guess oh, here maybe I, maybe this will work you might you might think well we'll just we'll just loop this like that but that would be a mistake because you can include it with those two down there to have another group of four so in the end you have three groups of four. Now, you should be able just to look at this map and read those groups off. Now, this vertical column, because it goes all the way down, is going to completely, uh, both C and D are going, to, are, are going to change in this column. But A and B will stay the same. And you know that this column would be 0, 1, so that would be A prime B. So this group of, this group of four is A prime B. What about this group of four down here? Well, you know that this is A. You know that this is the center two rows are B. Or, I'm sorry, the center two columns are B. You know that the bottom two rows are C, and you know the middle two rows are D. But you also know these two columns are A prime. These two rows are C prime. You know that the top and the bottom row are D prime, and the, and the left and right most columns are B prime. So if you look at this group, it's clearly going to be C, but it's going to be A prime. D changes because it's 1 here and 0 there. B changes because it's 0 here and 1 here. So this is going to be, this group of 4 is going to be A prime C, right? And then this group of 4 that's, that wraps around like this, that group is going to be uh, A prime again, but instead of C, it's going to be A prime not D, because that would be the middle two rows, but D prime. So that's going to be A prime, D prime. So now we have our solution, and we can look and see min term. Let's see, so this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So min term 6 right here needs to be a 1. But min term, uh, what, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 
So 12 and 15, these need to be zeros, right? Okay, so now uh, if we write the solution down, then that's just going to be, that's just going to be uh, a prime d prime plus a prime c plus a prime b. Now, interestingly, you can factor out that a prime, and you get a prime times d prime plus c plus b, which actually is in POS form, isn't it? And, uh, so, and this is in SOP form. So it's, this is one of the easiest to switch from SOP to POS. All right. So, uh, and, in, and in both cases, in both SOP and POS, we want to choose, uh, we want to choose it exactly the way we did. Now, how would this look? Well, so, so what you do is, in POS, these are all zeros. You take these as zeros. So this whole thing would be A, but that's A prime in POS form. Because remember, you take, you pretend they're ones, you write it down, so that would be A if there were ones, but they're not. So now you invert it, and that just becomes A prime. Right. And then what you're left with then is, uh, what you're left with then is uh, this wraparound term, which, would, which wraps these two zeros, and that's going to be a three-variable term. And that, if, they were, if these were ones, then that would be, uh, then that would be B prime, C prime, D. B prime, C prime, D. But now we're going to invert it, and we're going to get B plus C plus D prime. And that's what we get. All right. Uh, I guess you can't quite see that. Uh, let me pop this up just a hair. And then pull this down just a hair. And you click on this to get the stuff out of the way. Okay. All right. So, so if we ask for the POS solution, it's just this. If we ask for the SOP, it's just this. In this case, it's easy to switch. You don't even have to look at the zeros. You can just look at this and go, well, I can factor out an A prime, and that just gives me A prime times D prime plus C plus B. And sure, here is the group of eight that makes you a single variable group which would be a prime. And then, uh, and then here's the three variable term, because uh, zero's here. You wrap around to get those, and that would be d prime plus c plus b, or b plus c plus d prime. And so that's the POS solution. You can get it off the map, or you can do it with switching algebra, because in this case, the switching algebra is really easy. That is not always the case, is it? Um, okay. Now, uh, figure, so let's, let's look at, couple of these others. Uh, let's look at this one. What if we wanted to take this and convert it to uh, POS? Let's see, is that what we're doing with that? Yeah, so so this is in POS form now. We want to make it SOP. How would we do that? Well, so, uh, so the interesting thing is we have a B here. We have a B here. We have a C prime plus B. We have a C prime plus B. So this term can go away using x times x plus y equals x. All right? And then now we're just left with this. Well, we have a b and a b. And so, uh, so that's really nice. So what we can do then is we can actually, um, uh, yeah. And actually, we could get rid of this c. But I, we won't worry about that for now. So let's let's just let's let's use this. Let's take uh, we'll do the second distributive law, which is uh, b plus or sorry, which is x plus y z equals quantity x plus y times quantity x plus z, and we'll let we'll let x be b, and we'll let uh, y be c prime, and we'll let z be c plus d prime. And so when we when we do that, we wind up with uh, the x, which is because we're and we're applying it in this direction, okay? So the x will just be uh, b, 
b plus, and then we have to multiply y and z. So the y we said was c prime, so that's c prime times the quantity c plus d prime. Now when you do that math, you get b plus c prime c plus c prime d prime. Well, c prime c is zero. C, and, c prime and with c is always zero. And so then you just wind up with b plus c prime d prime. Okay? And then switching this one, the POS form, we'll, we'll flip this over and do it on the back. Uh, well, maybe we'll do it down here. Okay, so now we have b plus c plus c prime d plus b prime c prime d plus cd. Well, we have a cd here and a cd there, so that term goes. We have a c prime d and a c prime d, so this term goes. So now we're just left with c prime d plus c, uh, c prime d plus cd. Well, we can combine these to d. So done. So so d is is in both s is in both SOP and POS form. So we simplify it, and now we get it in a single variable, which can be either form. So that's super easy. All right. Now let's look at this. Let's look at this. Uh, this VHDL code right here. So. So you might ask, might get some questions about this. So let's just look at it. So first off, what do you think? What kind of flip? What, what's going on here? Well, the entity description says flip flop. That should be a big clue. And then you have a D in the port list. That's another big clue. Then you have clock, clear knot, set knot, and then those are all inputs. And then you have your Q and Q prime out. All right. Let's look at the architecture. So we've got a process block. What are the, what's in the sensitivity list? Clock, set knot, and clear knot. And then uh, if clear knot equals zero, then set temp equal to zero. And uh, yeah. And then else if set knot equals zero, then temp equals one. And finally, else if clock tick event and clock equals one. Now remember. This clock tick events the idiom that just means the clock just changed, and we're ending that with now the clock is one. So if the clock just changed and it's one, was that a rising edge or a falling edge? It was a rising edge because now it's one and it just changed. So that must have been this event right here, the rising edge. So we now know it's a rising edge clock, and then in that case, we'll assign D to temp, and then down here, we use temp in, this is out of the process block. These are just assignment statements. And we're going to assign temp to Q, not temp to Q prime. And that's it. So it's a D flip-flop. It's a D flip-flop. So basically, it is this. You've got a little flip-flop here. You've got a rising edge clock. That's your clock. You have um, a D input here. And then you have a set not and you have I can't write it in but but you have a clear clear knot so the set knot would have a bubble on it and the clear knot would have a bubble on it too and then you have Q and Q prime of the outputs I should have made a bigger clock bigger bigger flip-flop square all right so that's what it looks like and um, one of the questions might be what if set knot and clear knot are both equal to zero. What's Q going to be? Well, you just look. It checks clear knot first in the if statement. Now, it, the way if statements work, if it if this is true, it's not even going to evaluate these two down here. They're ignored. Only if this fails will it evaluate the next one. And only if the first two fail will the third one be evaluated. So if clear knot is zero, then it's going to clear the flip-flop and Q will be zero and the set won't even be evaluated nor will nor will the uh, the D uh, and whether or not you have a recent clock event so so that's 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 how that works out so you have to always keep that in mind okay all right now let's look at this we've we'll look at this one next because we've done this one before 
This is a sequence detector. It has one input X, one output Z. The network outputs Z equals zero unless it sees the sequence 111 or 011 when Z equals one. The network resets as soon as the target cannot be realized. So no overlapping targets. Discarding the value just received, oh, that's when it resets, so it discards the value just received. If the target is realized, it also resets, so the next value that comes in starts the next possible target. So on S equals zero, uh, from S equals zero, we output a zero. So first of all, it's a more. So in a more, the outputs are associated with the links. So we put output a zero because we don't have a target. And since our one target is 110 and the other target is 011, no matter whether we get a zero or a one, we're gonna to go to S and we have, we have the first item. We'll just call it X because it can be zero or one, doesn't matter. And then, uh, and then in S1, we have two possibilities for X. X can be equal to zero or X can be equal to one. If X is equal to one, now we're going down to S2. Oh, and we'll output a zero here too. I should put that in. Well, I'll put a zero, and that means we have x n plus a zero, or sorry, plus a one. We have x plus one, and that's going to one. Now, what do we do if it's zero? We're going to reset on a zero. Now we're in S2. If we get an, another one, we're going to S3, and we're going to output a one, because that's a target. So that's target, but it's also reset because the next value that comes in, we're gonna go automatically to here on a zero or a one. What if we're in S2 and we get a, we get a zero instead? Well, now we have to reset, so we're gonna go all the way back up to here, and we'll put a little zero on it. It's a little hard to see all those zeros. Let's put this zero up here on this. And that's all you have to do. Now, uh, yeah. So now you've solved the state graph. All right, let's look at this SM chart right here. You have how many different nodes or blocks? So this is a block. Well, that's a state box. That's a state box, and that's a state box. Remember, every block has to have a, at least one, at least and one and only one state box. So this this is going to be one block here. This is going to be another block here. And this is going to be our third block. Okay. I didn't quite get this right because I, I should have drawn this line across here. That's where I should have drawn it. All right. Now, uh, we've named our, we've done flip flop state assignment. So this one's assigned 0, 0. And we'll call this A and B. So A prime, B prime. This is A prime, B. So that's a prime b prime, a prime b, and this is a b. So we didn't do straight binary order. Now, let's say what is it? We have two flip flops, so we have to generate equations for our dA input. Well, how do we do that? We pick every block where a is one. Well, a is one here, so we have to account for all the paths into this block. One comes from here, so that's going to be a prime b, and since x is 1, a prime bx. a prime bx plus, we have 1 coming from this block. That's a b, in this case, x, plus a bx. All right, and then the db, that's going to equal all the paths into this state, because b is 1 here, and this state, because b is 1 there. a is 0, and they're both 0 here. But here b is also 1. So we have to add to the paths we just did, which a prime bx, so a prime bx plus a bx, because we already worked that out for here. And how about here? Well, there's one path in, and it comes from here, which is a prime b prime, and when x is one. So that's just gonna be a prime b prime x. And you may be able to simplify this a little bit, and that's fine. Yeah, this can be simplified to bx, and this can definitely be simplified to uh, bx plus uh, a prime x. And this can go off because uh, we can cancel that b prime. If you know that's uh, 
That's theorem, I think that's theorem 12. Okay, uh, or maybe, no, maybe, I'm sorry, that may be 11, 9, 10, 11, I think that's 11. All right, uh, okay, what about this, uh, let's jump down here. Design a, a muley sequential circuit having one input and one output that will produce an output of one whenever four ones are input in a row and zero otherwise. And it resets as soon as zero is received, as a zero is received. But overlapping targets are allowed. Links are to be labeled. Okay, so we have to label these. The links, uh, yeah, are to be labeled. Okay, so input and output. Does, so first off, it's a mealy. Having one input and one output that will produce an output of one. So we have an input X and we have an output Z. And it, Z is going to equal 1 whenever we get four ones in a row, and otherwise 0. And as soon as we get a 0, it'll reset. But if we keep getting more ones, it'll just, it'll, it'll just stay 1 because overlapping targets are allowed. All right, so, it does, so an input sequence for X and Z, an output. So if we did 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So then Z would be 0, 0, 0, 1, because that's 4. Still win. Now 0, 0, 0, because we just won. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. Okay? Does that make sense? So that's our test sequence. All right, so we're going to start in S0. It's melee, so we have... We don't have any outputs associated with our nodes. We just, we just, they're just associated with the link. So, so here we have nothing. Uh, yeah, nothing. Okay. Now, if we get if we get a one, then we should go here on a one, and we output a zero. But if we get a zero, we'll stay here and output a zero, because we still don't have any ones. Now in S one. We have one one. If we get another one, we'll go down here, and now we have two ones. But we still output a zero because we don't have a target yet. In th in three in two in one rather, if we get a zero, we're going to have to reset. Output a zero. Now in four, if we get a zero, we'll reset again. But if we get a one, now we're going here, and we have one two three ones. And we'll still out, we'll, we'll still output a zero because we we don't have uh, four ones yet. Now here in S three we have three ones. If we get a one, then great. We're going to have a target and we're going to output a one, but we're going to stay here because now we still have uh, we're still working on three ones for the next one. And but if we get a zero, then we're going to output a zero and go back to S zero. Now if we have accounted for it, we have one input. So we have to account for two paths out of each node. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. So every node has two paths accounted for it. So we're done. And that's pretty straightforward. All right. Uh, we'll do this problem. This problem is really pretty straightforward. Um, so uh, here's the sequence that we have to count. Let's see. I'll raise it up just a little bit. Okay, so six, seven, one, three, five. Six, seven, one, three, five. I'm just going to write that. Six, seven, one, three, five. All right, so zero, don't care. One, uh, one is three. Two is don't care. Three is five. Four is don't care. Five is back to six. Six is uh, seven. And seven is one. So we just we just given any one of these states, we this tells us what the desired next state is. Or if it's does not in the count sequence, it's a don't care. Now we all order these in binary order so we can extract them easier to the K map. I mean you don't have to have them in binary order, but just think how difficult it would be to extract them to the K map. Now I've already fill, filled in the don't cares. Don't care for zero. I don't care for 0, 1, 2, don't care for 2, and 
who don't care for uh, four. But we still have to account for one and three, five, six, and seven. So here's one. So one for A is going to be a zero, so we won't put it in. And for uh, so and three is going to be a one, so we'll put that one in. And then for uh, five, so five is going to be a one. Six is going to be a one, and seven is a zero, so we'll leave that out. Now you can see. To simplify this, we can do the wrap around here. And then we can obviously combine these two and these two. So we have one group of four, which will be a single variable in this case, and that will just be uh, that will just be c prime plus this one, which is going to be uh, a prime b plus this one, which is going to be a b prime. Now let's do this one. Now we're going to use this column here. All right, we already have the don't care in. So then it's one, don't care, zero, so we won't put it in. Don't care, one, one, and zero. Follows the other one, uh, almost, not quite. So now we're going to have this group and this one wrap around the group. So it's going to be, this one's going to be C prime plus the wraparound group, which is just going to be, or sorry, that's the wraparound group, plus this one, which is going to be B prime. And then this one, we have 1, 1, x1, and then x0, 1, 1. So, so that's going to be this group of 4. It could be the wrap, but that we won't need that one. And this group of 4. So that's going to be a prime, and this one is going to be b. So that's just going to be a prime plus b. Okay. And then that's that's the solution. And then if we had three flip-flops, here are three flip-flops, a, b, and c, we'd make them all d flip-flops with a d input, a d input, and a D input, and there's a Q out, Q out, and here's our clock. Make them rising clocks, and all the clocks. There's our clock in, and then our 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 C would just be would just be uh, an OR gate with A prime B. The B would just be uh, an OR gate with C prime, B prime. And this one's a little more complicated. It's three terms going, it's two AND gates, A prime, B, and then A, B prime. And then these are going into an OR gate. And also into that OR gate would be C prime. That's it. That's your circuit. Although you didn't have to draw that for this necessarily, but I just threw that in. All right, let's look at this problem. So this is this is uh, almost uh, not quite. I have to go up just a little bit. Okay, it's close now. All right, we'll slide it up here in a second. You are to use a state machine chart for the problem with an input x and output z where z equals zero except where the target zero, one, zero is detected. Overlapping targets are allowed. Use Mealy machine. Z is assumed zero if conditional assignments are not in the path. Note. Two flip-flops, A and B, are used to hold the present state. Okay, so you got two flip-flops, A and B. Uh, so only a few of the link paths are labeled. Some of the other ones are, uh, are already filled in. And I don't know if, I mean, it won't necessarily look exactly like this, but this is a good example. So I might ask you some questions. So, so what are some questions I might ask you? Well, 
so uh, this is figure 10. So I might ask you, the reason that the conditional output for Z only appears in the one link path out of state S3 is that, is that, is that uh, is that everywhere else z is assumed to be zero and therefore not specified that's correct so you only write the conditional output boxes here and z is there we don't even write z equals one everywhere else z is going to be zero if it doesn't appear and it doesn't so there that's the only one so everywhere z is only going to be one here and that should be correct because uh, Z is supposed to be one when you get the target. So, so here you have nothing. Here you have zero, two zeros, three, two zeros and a one. And now all you have to do is get the next zero right here. And now Z equals one. And then where do you go? Well, if you think about it, you you have the first zero in the next zero zero one zero. So you go to here. All right. So, um, so it's pretty well worked out. So. Um, yeah all right so so now let's write the equation for um, well let's see what the, so uh, so the reason why uh, the conditional output uh, for Z only appears in the one link path out of state s3 is that everywhere else Z is assumed to be zero and therefore not specified true use the SM chart to calculate the D input for flip-flop a okay so we want the D sub a okay okay so now what are our encodings? So it's A, B, so this one's 0, 0, this one's 0, 1, this one's 1, 0, and this one's 1, 1. So everywhere our, our A code is a 1, we need to include all paths into that. So here it, it's, it, A is 0, here A is 0, here A is 1, and here A is 1. So we need to account for all paths into S2. There's one that comes from S2, and there's one that comes from S1. So the one that comes from S1 is going to be A prime b x prime because x is zero right here and the one that comes from itself is going to be a b prime x prime because x is zero there going in and then we need to account for the path here there's only one path coming in here that comes from here that would be a b prime a a b prime x so now our d sub a is just a prime b x prime plus a b prime x prime plus a b prime x and you can probably sim simplify it a little bit uh, well maybe not uh, a b prime x yeah okay you can combine these two you can drop the x so that's just a b prime and then so it's going to be uh, a prime b x prime plus a b prime all right and then uh use the sm chart to calculate the d input for flip-flop a yeah okay we did that select the correct answer only okay write the expression for the output z pick the correct answer only okay so z is only one here so z is going to equal everywhere it's one z equals this is the only path a b x prime So z equals a b x prime. Um, let's see. If overlapping targets were not allowed, which numbered link path would have to be changed? And let's see. So that's which uh, link path would have to be changed. Type in just the number only. So which link path do you think? So if this so this is our target so this, so clearly this is the one that's involved uh, if you didn't have overlapping targets this would have to go back to s0 so you'd have to change link path 3 all right um, okay so that's pretty easy and then uh, we didn't do B let's do B uh, since we've got it here we'll just, we'll just do B uh, so let's do B. So the D sub B is, it involves, it involves this one and this one. So we already have this one. That's A B prime X. 
a b prime x and now we just have to add two paths into here one comes from here a prime b prime x prime and one comes from here a b x prime a b x prime and so a prime b yeah so I don't think you can simplify these at all. All right, so that's what you're left with. All right, didn't ask for that, but we did it anyway. All right, and then, uh, okay, I think final, we'll, we'll, do, we'll do this one. Okay, you are to draw, you are to draw a state machine chart for a problem with an input X and an output Z where Z equals X, except that it must prevent three zeros in a row. If the input 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, the output Z should be 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. Instead of that 0, we change it to a 1 here, 1, 0, 1. And we change it because you're not allowed to have three zeros in a row. Um, yeah. Now, the net resets after the target. So whenever you get a target, it resets. Use the Mealy machine. In indicate straight binary flip-flop state assignment for each block shown by the dashed lines. Finish the SM chart connections and put in the value for Z. Then write in DA, DB, and Z equations below. Okay, so in this case, uh, of course, we know Z is going to be 1. So, okay, so this is going to be 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0. So there's no 1, 1 node because we're going to do straight binary order. Okay? And uh, I think that's what it said, right? Uh, flip Shown by... Uh, indicate straight binary flip-flop state assignment for each block. So 0, 1, 2. And then, uh, yeah. All right. So so here we have uh, finish the SM chart connections and put in the values for Z. Okay, so so if we're in state S0 and we have nothing, the first thing we want to get is a 0. So we're going to go here on a 0, but on a 1, we're going to just stay here. So we have to connect that. All right. Now we're in S1. And Z, of course, is going to be 0. So now we're in S1. We have a 0 detected. The first 0, remember our target, we want to prevent three zeros in a row. We want to prevent that. Okay. So, so that's one 0. Now we get our next 0. So now we have two zeros. So clearly we're going over here like that. But if we get a 1, we're going to reset back to, back to 0 because now we don't have any zeros, so we're good. Then here, if we get a zero, that's clearly where Z, uh, so Z is going to be, Z has to be, Z has to follow. So Z would be zero here, Z would be zero here, but Z would be one here. So we have to put a Z in here, and Z would be one here, so we have to put a Z here. And now, uh, now uh, the zero connects over here. Uh, now we have two zeros. Now if we get that third zero, then that's where zero, instead of z being a one, z has to be a, a zero, a z has to be a one there instead of a zero. And here, z has to also be a one. So, and then, uh, then what it says is you, we reset. So if, if we get a one, we're gonna reset. And if we get this, we're gonna reset. So no matter what we're gonna do, we're gonna go back to nothing, okay? And that's, the whole problem and actually if you look at it we don't even need this decision box because we could just we could just get rid of all this because no matter what happens we're outputting z equals one so we could just put z here and skip the decision box and we could and no matter what we're always going back to s1 so we can just have it like that all right as part of completing the sm chart what point should number seven be connected to all right, so number seven should be connected to, well, should it should go back to one, basically. Um, uh, so I hope that was, hope that was, let's see what that was. Uh, let me do that. So five, incorrect, eight, incorrect, one, correct. Yes, it should go back to one. As part of completing the SM chart, what point should number five be connected to? 
So number five is right here. Clearly that should be go to four, right? And yes, it goes to four. The conditional output box in the S2 block, which shows Z inside it, means that for this link path out, let's see. Uh, the conditional output box in the S2 block, which shows Z inside it, means that for this link path out of the decision box, Z is equal to one. True. With straight binary assignment of the flip-flops, the value of AB for state S2 would be one, one. No, that's not right. It's one, zero for straight binary. False. This problem uses D flip-flop. Yes. Uh, sorry. Uh, oh, so figure 12. Okay. Figure 12 down here. So what kind of flip-flop is it? Clearly JK. Falling edge with an active high clear. All right. So because the clear is high, you mark it here. All, all these falling edges are going to be blocked. So you don't, oh, except that one. That one's possibly going to take effect. Okay, so forget that. We don't want to block that one. These are all good, though. Okay. And then here, J is 1 and K is 1. Here, J is 0 and K is 1. Here, J is 1 and K is 1. And here, J is 0 and K is 1. So you have to remember a JK flip-flop. So if they're both... So it's just you just have to remember this this simple this simple thing here. I'll write it up here. So J and K. If they're both zero, it's hold. If J is one and K is zero, it's set. If J is zero and K is one, it's clear. And if they're both one, it's toggle. So here it's going to be toggle. Here it's going to be clear. Here it's going to be toggle, and then this is an active clear. So, so all through here it's going to be clear, and then here it's going to be clear as well. Okay, so toggle if it starts out at zero, so Q equals zero at the beginning, and the prop and the and the propagation delay is um, five nanoseconds, and so each division is five, so it's one division. So here's where it registers the inputs, but it's not going to change till here. So it's going to toggle. It's going to go up there. Then here it's going to read this, and it's going to clear. It's going to stay down. Here it's going to toggle again. Here it's going to, it's going to 10, 5 nanoseconds after that's asserted. So it's asserted, it's asserted here. So 5 nanoseconds later, it's going to go clear. It's going to stay clear till it's deasserted and the next active edge, which is here, and at this point, it's going to stay clear so it doesn't change. So that's what it looks like. All right. And so the questions: uh, Does this this problem use a D flip flop? False. It's a JK. What clock is the clock? Is what type? Falling edge. The filled in uh, the filled in with hash marks indicates where the clear is high. It shows where it's asserted. Yes, it's an active high, clear, because there's no bubble. It is asserted when it's high. It's high here, so that's when it's asserted. The marked clock edges correctly show where the clock is active. Yes. Uh, true. Since it's overwritten by the clear, these clock edges are not marked. Where, where both J and K are high, regardless of the clear whether the clear is asserted, Okay, where, when bo where both J and K are high, regardless of whether the clear is asserted, the output will toggle. No, where the clear is asserted, it, the output will never be affected by the clock as long as clear is asserted. Um, and yeah, and that's it. And then there's some general questions. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna cover just a little bit of. I, I, there, there are a couple things I meant to mention in chapter 14, and I'm just going to add those now. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to expand this camera a little bit. And then uh, I'm going to, well, actually I'm not. I'm going to go back here, but I am going to bring up my slides. Just two of them, and then we'll be done. Uh, right here. Okay. Now, so... Uh, 
one of the things that we we, we, we sort of did, but I never really talked about it formally, so I'm, that's why I'm going to do it now. One of the things that we're doing, instead of zeros and ones, we're using variable names in our state graphs, in our state machine charts, to give more meaning to the diagrams. Now, usually, uh, outputs are considered zero if the name is missing. So if you don't, if you don't have a, a mealy output in a conditional output block, then whatever the outputs that exist, they're all considered zero unless they're specified. If they're specified, if we write Z in, then we assume it's a one. And then inputs may need to be presented as either X or X prime, uh, or Y, you know, X1, X1 prime, X2, X2 prime, or whatever, to indicate that the new value received is zero or one. So sometimes we'll change the inputs. Uh, so you could, for instance, if we go back to, uh, if we go back to, uh, did we kill it? No. If we go back to here, uh, let's see, we'll put this up, put this back. Not there, not there. Um, no. Oh, yeah. So like here, uh, it, uh, let's see. Um, yeah, so so instead of like zero or one, we we actually we could we could label this we could label this x prime and x. That'd be that that'd be an option. But anyway, but usually when you have a decision box, we just go ahead and label them zero or one like that. Okay, now one other thing, completely specified. Uh, so completely specified. Using a state graph, if we OR together all the all the input labels on paths out of a state, they should OR to one. And if we AND pairs of inputs, any pair of paths, uh, if, if we AND the input labels on any pair of paths pass out of a node, they should give us a zero. Okay? And and what that just basically means if you if these are both true. Then that means that there that there is only one particular path out for each input variable combination for that node, and that and and if that's true for all nodes, then your state graph or your SM chart is completely specified. So and of course that's what you want. You you want it to be completely specified so that there's no ambiguity about uh, what is and is not going to happen on any set of inputs. What you don't want is two paths. Uh, going in some direction uh, on the same set of inputs, where they go different directions on the same set of inputs. That's that's illegal, and so that means you've got a problem with your uh, SM chart or your state graph. Okay, I think that's all I really wanted to cover. Hopefully, that's uh, helpful, and we will then next week. I'm I'm thinking about doing the uh, the sessions live. I'm thinking about doing them at nine o'clock in the morning. Uh, oh, sorry, at 11 o'clock in the morning on Monday and Wednesday. So uh, I'll send out an email. And the reason I'm thinking about doing them live is so that if you want, if you can show up and you want to show up, you can show up. And then it'll be a live Zoom and students can ask questions. And I'll try and answer the questions. I'll do some review. And then uh, I'll post those videos as the videos for those days. But they won't be posted ahead of time because it's not going to happen until class time. So it'll probably be posted maybe an hour and a half, two hours late, something like that. Okay, so live classes, synchronous live classes online next week. Optional, don't have to show up, uh, but if you do, you'll be able to ask questions. And I hope, I hope a good handful of students show up so there are students asking questions. And if you want to ask questions, show up. I will also do office hours on Monday at 12. And uh, I'll, I'll probably try and have a help session scheduled uh, before we do the final exam for some, a little more review. But we'll do two more review sessions next week. So we're going to have reviewed ourselves, uh, you know, uh, basically until we're sick of the review, basically. All right. Any questions? Uh, that's fine. And uh, I will see you guys later then.